When he was seven, Charlie was obsessed with kingfishers. When he was 13, just looking at animals wasn't enough, and he was compelled to take pictures of them. He got his first job as a wildlife cameraman when he was 16. But now he's 40, Charlie's done something extraordinary. He's bought a rainforest in Peru. I didn't want to sit around and spend my life being depressed about the environment and not doing anything about it. So I thought, right, if I can do my bit, then at least I know in my life I've done my bit. Charlie wanted to understand the issues and the people threatening the whole of the Amazon. So for us it's difficult. If we don't take the wood, we don't survive. But after nearly a year in the rainforest, he's seen firsthand the poverty that drives people to cut down the trees. How much could we offer for this tree to not to tumber it? How are you doing? And now he's responsible for much more than a battered piece of land. Sometimes I think that even if I've managed to take my life, I mean, to her and to me. There are those that say it's already too late, that nobody cares if we wreck the planet. But if we're going down, Charlie's going down fighting. Welcome to camp. So these are tents for Kit, and there's my tent, which is, look, I mean, I mean, that's just embarrassing, isn't it? Why keep it tidy? My mum's not checking, is she? And then just down here, that's the path to the bathroom. I say bathroom, I mean gorgeous, crystal clear, mountainous stream. This is Charlie's third trip to his rainforest. And for an animal-obsessed cameraman, there are few better places to spend your time than the Amazon. Look, come over here. Look, look at this. This is a full-on swarm of army ants. Every single creature that's stuck in this is going to die. And it's going to be chopped up, taken back to the den, or the bivouac. That something's been killed here. These are actually my favourite kind of army ant, these ones. They're called Esiton bocelli. They might look little, but they are one of the most important creatures in the rainforest. They're what's called a keystone species. They're coming onto me now. Really hurt when they bite. Ah! <laughs> but what's cool about them is they're actually considered an environment. You've got the high Andes, the rainforest, the cloud forest, the lowland rainforest, and army ants, because they are basically a moving ecosystem. And all around us are ant birds, and they feed on the insects that are trying to escape from the ants, and two or three stings will kill one. So they spend their whole lives right on the edge of that risk. If they make a mistake, they're gonna die. Very cool. Charlie paid £6,000 for 100 acres of rainforest without seeing it first. He wanted to use the land as a barrier to stop people getting into Manu National Park. I suppose the thing that excites me about it is that of all the rainforests in the world, it is the best one and it's the most biodiverse place on Earth. Although Manu is supposed to be a protected area, it is being illegally logged, and Charlie's land is strategically placed at the end of the only road for miles. But when he first arrived, he discovered that his own piece of paradise was 100 acres of knackered secondary forest and a large field of coca. 
The few guards patrolling Manu discovered a sign warning Charlie not to interfere. But his biggest worry is that an illegal logger called Ilias is still using the land to support his family. Is it the yucca that's your main income, or is that the illegal logging? Cuando sale, bueno, la yuquita en ganas también. Esta yuca debería estar así grueso. Mientras sale un año, siempre tienes que tienes que sacar un poco madera y espaca. Do I value protecting Manu more than I value the family? Me dijiste que está en patria. No es sanito. I probably value Manu more. Charlie knew he'd have to act tough to protect the Amazon, but when he went to kick Ilias out, he just couldn't bring himself to do it. Cuando estaba haciendo pilar arroz, porque antes trabajábamos también arroz. Pongo el saco, entonces me agacho y me coge el motor de mi, a ella. I think the worst thing was when Ilias told me he had a disabled daughter. I didn't believe him, and I actually thought he was using that as a tool to try and. Uh, sway me and then when I met her I felt so cynical and guilty for making that assumption. Charlie promised his family that this would be his last trip to Peru for a while but unless he can work out what to do with Ilias he will have achieved nothing and to make matters worse the park guards think that while he's been away, somebody has been smuggling trees through his land. When the river is cargado, esperan, ¿no? Todo el material, la madera que está preparada, botan al río, lo traen por el río y acá lo cargan también igual acá. Do you know these guys? Do you know who they are? No lo hemos visto, no hemos encontrado en el sitio. Pero sí, la madera cortada hemos encontrado. La cuestión es sacarla a Elías, porque es el que trae amigos, compañeros, socios. Si no, ya no habría yuca, ya prácticamente ya no entrarían por la zona. No sé cómo habrán coordinado que para que saquen la yuca, hasta cuándo es el plazo y determinar el plazo que, que salgan definitivamente. ¿no? Solo así vamos a controlar. Con la coordinación de ustedes, los dos las dos, ¿no? tenemos que poner fotos. ¿no? By allowing him to stay on the land, Charlie may have given Ilias and his friends the perfect cover story to continue logging the park. Of all the things I've encountered. Well, I've been out here. Ilias has been the most complex. I'm sort of stuck between uh, wanting to boot him off because that's, I suppose, what my original idea was, and knowing that morally I, it would be reprehensible for me to boot him off. So now, what do what do I now do to sort this situation out? But it's got me thinking. <laughs> if nothing else. I could just walk away, that's the other thing. And if I walked away from it, the only loss would be the money I'd spent on it, because the land would still exist in exactly the same way it did before. There are countless people like Ilias throughout South America who rely on the forest for their survival. But if they carry on hammering the Amazon at the current rate, then within 200 years, the rainforest will only exist in a few protected areas. And the crazy thing is, we don't even know what we're losing because modern science 
has studied less than 1% of the Amazon. Entonces, la humanidad la necesita ese esa bosque. Dejar de, de todo lo que es la computadora, la, la celulares o email, ¿no? dejarlo eso y un momento estar con nuestro nivel de vida, nuestro nivel de la espiritualidad se siga manteniendo. ¿no? Podemos sentir la energía del sol que entre las plantas, los olores de las plantas, las flores de las plantas y la energía de los rayos del sol penetra al cuerpo. Así podemos llegar de repente a balancear. Eso es el bosque, entonces el hombre necesita siempre el bosque. Don Alberto is a shaman for the Wachipiri tribe. He believes in a world that cannot be seen, a world of spirits. And part of his role in the community is to heal the sick and mend the soul. Though his methods look ridiculous in a world where medicine comes out of a bottle, many of our potions have ingredients found in the Amazon. And Charlie has asked the Don to take him on a tour of his medicine cabinet. Esta planta se llama hierba magnética. Es para desbalance mental. El olor te ayuda a de, de, desbloquear la mente. Cuando mucho pensamiento, mucho pensamiento. Mm. Sí. A estas plantas le llaman labio de moza. Uh -huh. Una de las plantas es una para la impotencia sexual. Le llaman este, como viagra. Sí, sí, sí. Uh -huh. Hay que masticar 32 semillas. Es como ají, mucho más, más. Oh, well. Esta planta se llama diente de león. Esto es para cáncer. If this can cure cancer, why doesn't the world know about this? El mundo la ignoran a la naturaleza, ¿no? Por eso es que no pueden encontrar. Por eso en los pueblos amazónicos. No es un miedo, o un día no lo tenemos miedo. Podemos estar con cáncer, pero ayudando con diferentes plantas. ¿no? Sí. Worldwide, there are 3,000 plants that have been identified as being useful in treating cancer, and 70% of them are only found in the rainforest. Our world of concrete and glass is so removed from nature that Alberto's connection to the land seems alien. Personally, I have a great big spiritual hole in me because I don't, I don't believe in anything that I can't have proved or see. Don Alberto has a patient whose left arm is paralyzed. He uses chanting and tobacco to channel nature's energy and calls on the spirits to help him diagnose what is wrong. Do you think it's through experience that you can work out, make diagnosis, or do you think it's the plant speaking to you or the forest speaking to you and giving you the knowledge of maybe what's wrong with it? Dos posiciones, uno la planta y el otro uno mismo. Mm -hmm. Como te sientes con el paciente al momento de tocar al paciente. Y a través de una, una, una voz, ¿no? una voz de, de la naturaleza. ¿no? como una voz. A veces puede ser una imagen.
I think it's very easy to romanticise the idea of Amazonian shamanistic medicine. And I think it's very easy to, to, to romanticise it over the top of our own medicine. And actually, you, we, we can't forget that our medicine is unbelievably good. We're incredibly good at curing things and making medicines. And I think we're a lot better at it than he is. <laughs> It sounds awful, doesn't it? But his approach and his explanation to me is that the actual compound is only one part of the process. There's, a, there's another a whole pile of elements, both physical and spiritual, that, that need applying as well. Lo que hemos ya llegado a diagnosticar su... En el Perú se dice que es una brujería. Brujería es, digamos, te pueden tomar tu fotografía, hacen trabajos de muñeco para que él esté mal con esta enfermedad. ¿Cómo estás? ¿Has hecho alguna diferencia en la noche? Por el momento no está no bien. A shaman doesn't learn about the forest from books or science. The forest speaks to Don Alberto. And there's one plant more important than any other to open his mind to the energy flowing through nature. This is ayahuasca, Charlie. This is not cosecha with the cuchillo, but with the hand. Alberto is brewing an infusion of 12 different forest plants that will give Charlie a glimpse of the world he sees. Porque la ayahuasca para nosotros es una planta maestra, una planta que enseña a conocer utilización de las plantas. Es que tiene mucha energía la, la, las plantas a través de una alucinación las, los bosques te hablan. ¿no? Esta práctica es por miles de años. Plants talking to people. Ah. Uh, load of old bollocks. <laughs> I'd have to think it wasn't. I suppose that's why I'm here. I want proof. I want some proof. According to Western science, ayahuasca activates parahippocampal areas of the brain that are involved in processing emotion and memory. Don Alberto describes how forest spirits will talk to Charlie in a dream and show him his true path. Snakes, wasps, spiders, crocodiles. There were a lot of animals in the, in the visions, but the only ones giving me messages were actually the rainforest animals. 
Whatever he did, it worked. It really worked. What I wanted to do was go on a journey to discover more about the forest. And it irritatingly was about me. The understanding of myself and being given this understanding by the creatures of the forest was the most enlightening and profound experience I've ever had. It absolutely blew me away. And what I realized is that although I have what I think is a knowledge and understanding of the world, I will happily admit that it might not be right. And uh, I look at Alberto in a different way. I know a bit more, and I wouldn't say I know, but I know a bit more about what he's talking about when he talks to me about the forest spirits because essentially I've seen them. The rainforest sustains a culture and understanding of the world that we've almost forgotten. It may contain medicines that could save millions of lives. And who knows how many species of plant and animal make their home here. In fact, it's almost impossible to comprehend how much is being lost. And whatever's being done to save the rainforest, it just isn't working. Before Charlie goes back to his land, he wants to see for himself one of the biggest threats facing the Amazon. And so he's traveled over the border to Brazil. I've got three hours on this road now. But what's getting me is the, the scale of the deforestation here. Well, it's not deforestation, it's annihilation. It's just massacred this place in every direction, as far as I can see. It's hard to imagine that these endless fields were once full of life, and it's all been wiped out to accommodate just one animal. Charlie's going to spend the next couple of weeks on Dino's farm. Compared to most ranches in Brazil, 300 head of cattle is tiny. But Dino still needs the help of all four of his sons when it comes to vaccinating this year's calves. Oh, you're so desperate to see me fail, aren't you? It's kind of like playing rugby. The cattle rugby. It's crazy. Hey, one of the world's most complex ecosystems with the highest diversity of animal life on Earth. 
and then you, you know, you reduce it to this. Grass. Doesn't really get more basic than that, does it? Since 1970, over 140 million acres of rainforest have been destroyed in Brazil just to raise cattle. But once the big trees have been removed, there are no nutrients from the leaf litter and no shade from the canopy. So the land slowly dies. The easiest way to keep the farm going is to destroy more forest. Dino's sons have selected an area that they're going to burn down in the next few days. It's going to be quite a big operation, they're telling me. I think they're, even they're nervous about it, it's so big. I can hear a screaming peahart, which is an amazing sounding rainforest bird. Oh, do you hear that? That is the classic sound of the rainforest. That's, that's the sound. I can stop because I don't cry in front of these guys. It's weird, isn't it? It's the sound, it's the sound that's killing me, actually, not the, not the, not what I can see. It's the sound of that crappy little brown bird. The Brazilian forestry code is considered by many environmentalists to be a joke. Though 80% of private land is supposed to remain forest, the law is largely ignored. Is it dangerous? Tem que ir, deixar esse medo para lá e fazer, né? Que as consequências é grande, mas a gente tem que fazer. É o serviço da gente. Uh -huh. It already looks apocalyptic. So I can't imagine what it's going to look like when it's on fire. It's completely normal to them. This is like, you know, using Excel or doing photocopying in office to them. And I'm worrying about a piddly hundred acres. It does, it puts it into perspective. Uh, just being in Brazil makes me realize how pathetic and insignificant my bit of land is. Trees that produce oxygen have been replaced by cows that produce methane. And the damage this does globally is far greater than the pollution caused by every engine in every car on the planet. It's totally irrelevant what I think. You know, whether I'm worrying about it or depressed about it, it's rubbish. You know, I just think, well, screw me, screw what I think. You know, there's a big problem here, whether I'm depressed about it or not. The problem's still here. Thirty years ago, Dino came to the Amazon as a landless peasant. At the time, the Brazilian government was giving away chunks of the rainforest to anyone brave enough to tackle this new frontier. This is my kind of farming, herbs. Yeah. You've got everything. You've got coriander. Aqui é jabuticaba. That's really good. Essa aqui que nós vamos matar para comer hoje na janta. How do you kill the pig? Bate na cabeça e fura. 
the knife. So you hold it down and... Does it make a lot of noise? Yeah. 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 I don't want laughing. I don't want to do it. Não vamos. Trouxe a faca e o martelo. Ah, para lá, né? We're gonna do it now. That's actually just—it's just completely freaked me out. We were just wandering around the garden, and then suddenly we're smacking a pig over the head with a hammer. That's so weird. We really, really weird experience. I don't know why, it's so normal. I'm a human, I should be able to kill a pig. Why hang around? We're gonna kill a pig, let's kill a pig. <laughs> He's definitely the boss. He's almost like a sort of mafia boss and his sons all do what they're told. But to run Dino's kind of business, which is hard and needs serious labor, to have four strong sons in their 20s and 30s is ideal for him. But not only that, I mean, this place is lawless. This is the Wild West. So to have that level of protection, I think is exactly what he needs. No one's gonna mess with his family. Not like this. Uh -huh. Lots of people would be horrified at what you're doing. Because <laughs> people don't like chopping down the forest. Yeah, this is the only way of life that in Amazonia the survival of the people is this. Yes, it doesn't end. If it doesn't end, it doesn't end. You take one, it becomes the other. Yes. That's a weird feeling I'm having today. I feel... I feel like a bit of a fraud. So my brain's telling me, you know, this is wrong, I should say something. But on the other hand, they're some of the nicest people I've ever met. Everyone's happy and smiling all the time. And... Oh, God, look, another beautiful tree. This is a É bonita, né? É muito bonita. É. You gonna cut this one down? Não, não. Aqui não. Oh, bem. Não. Why not? Para os netos ver. Para seus filhos virem ver. Um dia vocês vai voltar aqui. Não vai? Obrigado. Se não, não vai ter. There is some hope. I have to man up a bit, aren't I? I'm gonna have to do some man work. We're here to kill this one. This one, this one is a bit of a bit. A bit of a bit of a bit. A bit of a bit of a bit of a bit. It's about 700 reais. It's 
Mas é daqui uma garefe profissional. Pode trocar a profissão de suporte por <risos> por açougueiro que não faz mais fome. These guys must think I'm so weird not knowing how to do this. Yeah, what the Seal of approval. <laughs> this is what all of this is all about. A hunk of meat. And the amount of rainforest that goes into this. It's pretty astonishing. Well, if you look at all the products that the forest gets cut down for, they're all luxury products. Cocaine. Gold, you know, high quality Brazilian beef, mahogany, all these things are luxury products. They're not, they're not products that anyone around here particularly, you know, is desperate for or needs to survive. They're all getting shipped off around the world to us, really. I bought some land in Peru, only 100 acres, and there's a guy living on it, and uh, he's, he seems to be still cutting it down. What, what, what do you think I should do with it? Rapaz, aí é uma uma situação difícil de responder porque tem que ver os dois lados, né? Eu acho que tem que ver o lado dele, ver, ver, tem, tinha que dar um jeito de, de tirar, ou dar o direito dele. Eu não sei dar uma resposta dessa não, né? Porque aí é complicado, ó. Eu não sei no Peru como é que é a lei do Peru. Mas se for igual do Brasil, não tira não. Morou em cima é dono. His dad owned it, he grew up there, he's been there all his life. And I kind of feel like a rich gringo is coming along and pushing him off his land. Even though it's mine. Tem que ter, tem que ter, tem que ter diálogo. Tem que conversar. Sim. Às vezes ele também não tem condições. Às vezes é necessidade, às vezes não, né? Agora que nem tu, eu não sei, tu não mora lá, né? Tudo, é, quem que cuida lá? No one looks after it. That's why I'm trying to work out what to do with it at the moment. É, e eu vou explicar o, o, o que eu passei pela minha vida. Eu não esperava. De chegar, conseguir terra, igual nós conseguimos hoje. A terra, para mim, eu não dou valor, não. Eu acho que o mais valor que eu tenho hoje é todo é o filho. É, mas isso aí é da vida. Terra vai ficar aí, ó. Entendeu? We shouldn't live in a world where Dina has to do this to get himself out of poverty. And that's why it's not his fault. And it, absolutely not a single shred of blaming me for anything that he or his family do here, which surprises me. Would I cut down the Amazon if I was in his position? I don't know. To 
feed my sons. Christ, if my kids, I suppose if my kids were starving and I had to do it and I had to provide for them and I lived here, then yes, I suppose I probably would. Mr. Walker, Mad, get some of your galon. Hey, 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 Aqui é outra estradinha que nós temos para chegar na casa. Aqui. Aqui vocês vão ficar aqui, para botar fogo aqui. Nesse trecho aqui, ó. Nós vamos vir, vamos cruzar aqui a derrubada. Aí vamos abrir dois para aqui. Uhum. Esses dois encontram com vocês aqui. E esses outros dois encontram com vocês aqui de novo. E eu e, eu, e nós dois vamos ficar com eles. Com, como é que é? Belisca Com belisca lua. O incendiário de hoje é o belisca lua. É. É. A lua vai começar o puff lá. Yeah? É. That runs desperate for me to light the fire. Os tamborzinhos de poça Não, não. <risos> Gasolina. <risos> Podemos botar fogo? Hã? Não, você faz. É, vai lá com ele lá. Você é o expert. Uou. É tão rápido. Vai pegar, Bush? É tão simples. Já pegou. Already I can feel the heat coming off that thing. It's about 50 feet away. Everyone's getting the hell out. Oh no, he's not. He's going to start some more. Bush, ele não quer não? Do you know, the more I see of this stuff, the less value I put on my land. I just think, what's the point? <laughs> Look at what Dino's burnt down. A much larger area than my bit of land. The scale of this place is unbelievable. It's, it's almost impossible to show the scale, the enormity of this place. Just the drive to get here. And I've got this piddly little pinhead of land. And you just think, what's the point?
I mean, the, the very basic level, buying my land was utterly pointless. É, beleza, calor aqui. Então eu vou, vou só plantar árvores. E tem, tem coco da, da praia, tem sucuba que eu vou deixar, que é, é natural, é, é medicinal, para quebradura. Uhum. Então vai ser um lugar que eu vou preservar. Nós não pode estar tá derrubando, como hoje, nós estamos acabando a mata. Para nós reflorestar aqui, tem que pagar uma pessoa, que é só a gente não dá conta, para cuidar isso aqui para mim. Eu, e que nem tu, eu faço uma pergunta. Lá do mundo rico, tem como condições de pagar para não ser derrubado? Yeah. We got loads of money sloshing around doing nothing. Even though we're in a recession, there's still billions of pounds being chucked into the wrong areas. Se interessa pelo caso, né? Where I come from, every, you know, everyone knows the problems. But the most people do is, is feel bad about it. They don't do anything else. Então, para nós é difícil. Nós, nós estamos numa, num lugar sem saída. Nós não tiramos a madeira, nós não sobrevivemos. Outra, nós não temos estudo, nós não temos nada. O, o que nós sabemos é fazer aquele serviço. E mexer com o bicho e acabou-se. Entendeu? Yeah, no, I, I, I get that. And that's why I don't blame you guys. I grew up being told that these bastards are cutting down the Amazon. And then I meet you, I meet your family, and you, you're some of the nicest people I've ever met. And uh, I take it all back. But it, make, it changes my view on everything. Fazer um reflorestamento. E para preservar tem, tem que lutar. <risos> Perhaps it's to be expected that in the badlands of Brazil's Wild West, one of the devils burning down the Amazon would tell Charlie that he has to keep fighting to save the rainforest. After all, Dino knows better than anyone what we're losing. It's a great big responsibility that I've landed myself with. And personally, I think it would be irresponsible for me now that I've taken on this bird and to walk away from it. It's absurd how much money human beings will spend on destroying the planet and how little we'll pay to save it. You could buy the whole Amazon with the money Britain spends on the military in just three years. But if you buy the rainforest, what are you going to do with all the people? With only a few weeks before he has to return home, Charlie tries to get to know the very man he has seen as the enemy, a man who has spent his entire life cutting down the forest. Right there, and then looking up the path. Yeah? Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Ilias, you asked me what I do. Well, this is what I do. I, I film wildlife, I film animals, I take photos of animals. And back in England, I sell those pictures and that's how I make my living. Yes, there are a lot of animals here. OK, Ilias, rather than me sticking it up, I want you to do it, yeah? Mm, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to see your results. tell us about it, Dan. I suppose I knew Ilias by reputation before I knew the man. And um, so the first sort of encounters with him, I was always, I was always scared, I suppose. I don't know why, <laughs> looking back at it now. But you know, the more I've got to know him, the more I like him. He's, he's a good guy. Ah, <laughs> well done. There, pretty good, Elias. Ah, acá caminan animalitos. Ahí caminito. Ah, uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gave him some yuca. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Okay, Elias, let's see what you've got. 
Ah, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> good. <laughs> you nailed it. That's your first wildlife shot, Ilias. One of the things I think I've learned about the rainforest is that all the bastards that are destroying it, every single one of those bastards I've met are nice people. And not bastards at all. So it's good to see you guys again. How's that, Celia? But you're glad you're not working today. <laughs> Up here? Mm -hmm. Wow. Que yo también estoy embarazada, ya seis meses, entonces con eso sería en total de niños que tendré que mantener él sería. Ah. Yeah. My photography a year ago was 100% animals. And now it's 95% people. I've gone through this whole process of understanding people. People I never really liked, I wasn't that interested in. And I've realised that people are the solution. And that is a monumental change in me. After nearly a year in Peru, Charlie has finally realised that the way to protect his land is to invest in people. When I, when I first came here, all I wanted to do, to be really honest, was, was get you off the land and try and stop any logging, any hunting, any activity on it. I just wanted it to stop. And that was, that's what I wanted to do at first. I, know, I don't want to sound horrible for saying that, but you were, you were to me, the big problem, yeah? Just, I suppose the, thing, the big thing I realised was that <clears throat> You're also part of the solution, and this was the key thing I realised. And that's why, if I want to, if I want to try and and make that land good land again, make it good forest again, I need you to help me. <laughs> so what this all boils down to, Elias, is is me making you an offer. I want you to reforest that land, to replant the trees in it, and for doing that, I will pay you slightly more than you get from your yucca and your illegal logging activities. And it's up to you to think, right, do I want that? Do I want to work five days a week for this guy? Can you do it? Do you want to do it? <laughs> Do you see, Elias, you're an expert on trees. <laughs> I can ask for someone better to be doing it. I think we can take that place and we can make it something special. And, and you know, in, a, in, a, in, a, in my ideal world, I think that you could be proud of to see growing rather than cutting it down. Yeah, I'm pretty chuffed. Sure. I'm trepidatious, I'm not stupid. There's a very high chance of failure. But I'm not going to let that cloud my excitement about the whole idea of Ilias working with me. And yes, it might fail, but I do trust him. As well as paying Ilias, Charlie's going to bring in experts who understand how to restore damaged rainforest. Look at that, a little rainforest there. <laughs> 
que lo, y acá tenemos otra especie que es el agua. ¿no? Como tú sabes, ¿eh? tú lo sí, conoces muy sí, bien al agua, ¿no? Casi no es acá, agua, ¿no? Entonces, ¿qué te parece, Elías? Sí, todo bien. They're going to plant a mixture of hardwoods and fast-growing softwoods, as well as bananas and other crops that can grow alongside the trees and provide Ilias with a second income. With any luck, he'll be self-sufficient within five years. I think the thing about this is it's so simple and symbolic planting trees, but it's who I'm with here today doing it. And, you know, I'm doing this with Ilias, and that's, that's the key to this. Not putting trees in the ground, letting trees go. It's who I'm actually here doing it with. Come on, Ilias, give me a hand. We'll do it together. We've got a lot more of these to go, Ilias. We've got a whole rainforest to plant. We can't stop now. <laughs> well done. Muy bien, sir. Muy bien. Charlie didn't find a way to protect the national park. But in this corner of the Amazon, he has already made a difference. Watching Heidi and Ilias, I felt quite proud. I suppose it hits me in a sort of um, a very happy way because it was a very nice moment to watch, but it was there was something really wretched about it as well because it's it's not solving a massive problem; it's solving a very tiny problem, and it hasn't even solved it yet. but I feel like at least I'm doing something, even if it's just one tiny small thing, which this is. You know, all we can do is hope, isn't it? Actually, no, that's bullshit. All we can do is hope, get off our asses and do something. <laughs>